Howdy folks, it's Angel the Hunting Gear Guy, and this is the Grey Birch Le Chassis takedown model. It's got a folding stock, and because it's a takedown model, you can take the barrel, put it on, and then rotate it on to get a nice little 22. Uh, this is just the chassis, so the uh, top bits here and the barrel and all that kind of stuff are just Ruger, standard Ruger takedown uh, 22 rifle stuff. Um, and the chassis has got a couple of interesting things on it. Now, we've got no magazine, and my chamber's empty, so we're good to take a closer look at this thing. Now, the stock on this thing is actually quite good. Uh, there's a couple of things that make it good. One, it attaches via pick rail, so this stock could technically be used on a lot of other rifles as well. Uh, it is folding, and it's uh, it's got a reasonably strong lockup. It's made, made mostly for, uh, for lightweight, but it does have some flexibility on adjustment as well. So you can see there that we could uh, pull out the butt pad, and then we can also uh, un loosen that guy right there so that we can adjust our length of pull, which I find really handy on Ruger 1022s. So a lot of Ruger 1022s, you just can't get the scope far enough forward. So two options there, either you get a cantilever scope mount or you give yourself a little bit more room on the back because if you take a look at this scope, like I couldn't go that much further forward because I'm stuck at my front ring there. So that's common on Ruger 1022s. Move the scope as far forward, give yourself a little bit more extra room and uh, and then my cheek rest is uh, is pretty good. We also have an adjustable cheek riser. Now it can uh, adjust through that screw up or down. And because we've got a couple of different holes on the top, we can also move it forward or back on the rifle. I think that's fine. Yeah, yeah, I'm right in the middle there. So that's a, a good spot for it. The locking mechanism on this thing is a uh, push down on the stock. So you push down on the stock and then rotate it around. It's non-locking, so it doesn't lock in the uh, in the forward position. It's just got a little bit of resistance kind of holding it there. And you can see the back here, that's where you pop it on. So it's got a little clampy guy on the side right here. And that's what uh, clamps onto that pick rail at the back and allows you to run that. Got a little bit of a open area at the back here. And then we can, we can add in an AR uh, pistol grip. So these things don't come with grips uh, by themselves. You, you add your own. I found this uh, uh, beaver tail grip, which I, I, I do like when uh, manufacturers allow the use of beaver tail grips because it makes for a nice smooth transition in there. Your hand isn't gonna be like on anything rough or anything like that. So that's a pretty good idea. Uh, anytime you do a, a pistol grip on a Ruger 1022, you, need, you do need to leave a little bit, a little bit of a, a spacer between the uh, trigger and the grip. Otherwise it's gonna be way too tight in. So this one is done tastefully in my opinion. You'll notice like this one's got an aftermarket mag release. This kind of mag release doesn't really work great on a pistol grip uh, rifle. Uh, you need something that either like stops right about there, which I've got many over there, or you just use the front ones, uh, or there's lots of other ones out there. There's the push forward ones over here. Uh, I wouldn't recommend this one because this is better for like a standard stock. Now we use a standard action screw. One thing, can you see that little hole back there? You can actually put a second screw in there to hold the back of this uh, receiver because on some Ruger 1022s, uh, they t tend to kind of um, teeter-totter on that action screw. This one, I'm not having any such issues. It's in there pretty good, so uh, I'm not having that issue, but being able to throw a screw down that hole and uh, and lock the rear of the, of the receiver into the stock is uh, is kind of nice and something you find on some of the higher end stocks as well. Um, on the bottom here, they actually use a different takedown mechanism than the uh, the standard Ruger one. Well, they use some of the parts, but they don't use the, uh, the locking block. Let me just pull that bolt out of the way. Um, instead, they uh, kind of just make use of more aluminum. They're gonna machine the thing anyways, so they've uh, they've got their own little recess for that, uh, that locking bit there. And you can see that the barrel is free floated up until right here. So right there, it's got two screws that go in there straight into the barrel and they're holding it right there, uh, fairly close to the back here. Now there's a couple of things that they put onto these uh, pieces that I think, think are pretty practical. One of them is a push button QD sling mount. So that uses these guys here. I really like these sling mounts. These are, in my opinion, these are the best sling uh, mounts because they're so easy to get in there. They rotate and uh, so they, the, these ones don't have any locks in them. And I, I prefer them without locks. I always find I get it in the wrong spot. And it's just very quick to pull a sling off when you've got this kind of a sling mount. They've got them on both sides. So we've got uh, both sides available for that. 
And then the other interesting thing, okay, we've got some M-lock slots along the bottom, we've got some N-lock slots along the, the side. Do you notice that groove in there? That is actually an Arca groove. So this is something that's more popular in PRS and, uh, and in long range shooting. They use the Arca mount because it's a, it's a nice wide mount, as you can see there, and you can mount pretty heavy duty stuff, tripods, uh, bags, that kind of a thing. Just to show you an example, this is a, a pretty sturdy little camera mount I've got, camera tripod, and I can actually tighten that onto the Arca rail on this thing. And because, like, and here's the real big advantage of Arca, whereas with M-Lock you have to kind of screw it in and you don't really get adjustability. Oh, loosen a little bit more. I can adjust where my bipod or my bag goes on this rail very easily because it just goes back and forth and just grabs on very securely because it's got such a nice wide bit of meat to uh, to grab onto. Now because the sling mounts are both on the side, what that allows you to do is just kind of run it uh, sideways on your body. And uh, I, I like running a rifle like this if I can because it, it's very quick to pull up and take a shot on game. So it just kind of sits sideways on you just like that and you can just pull it up. So very quick from that perspective and pretty practical again. Or you could just run it standard slung on your back just like any other rifle. It will sit sideways because it's it's got those mounts on the side. Um, pro for that, it's a little bit flatter on the side. If you ran them uh, on the top and bottom, you got like grips and that kind of thing that are going to get in the way. Con, um, if you run it, well there's like a couple of things that might get on you like there's the uh, pivot point on the stock, and if you get this stuff on the side, that's a little bit more on you, but uh, it's not that big of a deal. I really do prefer uh, running my sling swivels on the side like this, just because of how quick it is to just throw the rifle on and get it ready to take a shot on game. So enough talking about this stock, why don't we take it out to the range and uh, try it out with a variety of ammo. Now, I'm shooting this video after I went to the range. Um, I just realized when I went to the range, I took a bunch of crappy ammo. <laughs> I took a bunch of stuff that was um, low power, like really low velocity, um, and some of it didn't want to cycle in the Ruger takedown. It's no fault of the stock, it's purely just because it was, I, I, I used a grab bag of ammo and some of it was uh, subsonic, Remington subsonic I think, which are pretty slow. They're pretty slow and they wouldn't cycle in this gun. Got some like subsonics in there too. I don't know what that looked like, but it was pretty fun. Pretty fun shooting <laughs> this uh, this gun here. I do like, because you can adjust it so easily, it's very easy to get the correct ergonomics on this thing. I have this cheek rest set right now, so I really need to get 100% of my weight of, of my face on there uh, in order to get a proper cheek weld, which is just very easy and repeatable, right? So um, I do like that. I do like that it's, you're very quickly uh, able to add some length of pull to this thing to, uh, to get you appropriate or to at least push your face back from a scope that you might not be able to get too far forward. Um, if you want to solve that problem, you could go with like a proprietary upper, something that's got a, a bit of pick rail that goes a little bit far further out, um, or an optics mount that gets you a little bit further forward. Um, or you can go to with a red dot or something like that. I think, so how does this rifle, uh, this stock compare to some of the other stocks out there? Um, this is the takedown specific model. There's not really a lot out there for the, the Ruger takedowns. Uh, there's the factory stock. There's the Magpul stock. The Mag one co cool thing about the Magpul stock is that the they kind of clip together. Uh, the uh, barrel bit and this bit kind of clip together and, and get really small in your uh, uh, in your backpack or whatever. Um, but of course, they don't have like a folding stock or any of that kind of stuff. So I think the advantage here is that this with this combo, you can get this in a very small case. Um, and it looks cool. <laughs> I, th I think that's one thing that this has got that uh, uh, got definitely over top of the uh, uh, the Magpul. Did I say Ruger? The Magpul uh, takedown stock. Um, there was the Ruger factory stock. Uh, Hogue makes a, a takedown stock as well. That's more of like your old rubber over molded 
um, practical, but not very sexy and not very like uh, configurable like this thing. So all in all, this is probably this is the best takedown stock you can get for the Ruger 1022. Uh, just in terms of like functionality on it, the fact that it's got arc rail is really nice. I don't know if you'd want to shoot PRS with a takedown 22, uh, but it's nice to have the option. Uh, it's nice to have the option if you were to go, I don't know, go for small game hunting to be able to clamp this onto a bipod or a tripod or something like that is very nice. Uh, it's very, uh, I, I really do like this stock just in, in terms of how Spartan it is. <laughs> it's uh, it's so nice and slim, but it's got all the right stuff. It's got the adjustable cheek piece. It's got an adjustable butt stock um, and the folding mechanism on it is uh, is pretty good and nice and small. So uh, it does have a, a, a pretty stiff, there's like a, a little bit of wiggle, but for the size of it, you're not really going to get away from that unless you build something like atrociously uh, clampy on there, but uh, it's nice and small, very easy to uh, to pop out. Love the fact that you can get a beaver tail grip in there. Uh, really nice stock. If you want more details about this stock, stats in terms of weight and all that kind of stuff, check out my article and I'll link it somewhere up here. I, I'll figure that out one day. Anyways, thanks for watching.